Over the years, we've talked quite a bit about breadboarding overdrive circuits and boost circuits and some other things like that. One thing we haven't really done is really dove more into distortion. So let's do that this video. Let's get super nerdy and talk about some nerdy circuit details about distortion pedals, and let's kind of create our own. So what you'll see right here is basically a breadboard, of course, and I have a very simple distortion circuit I'll show you all the schematics in just a minute, but a very simple distortion circuit, just a non-inverting op amp, some clipping diodes after, very simple tone control. I have this little switch here. This is gonna change it from soft to hard clipping. Basically soft clipping would be more like an overdrive. Hard clipping would be more like a distortion. I clean tone through my Bravado amp. <laughs> Controls I have, this is my volume, that's my tone control, that's my gain control. Gain control is dimed right now, all the way up. Tone control, I just have, eh, it's a little past halfway, it looks like. Just enough to allow the highs in, I've, as I've explained before, whenever I'm dialing in a tone control, I generally start all the way down. And then I turn it up until I get just the right amount of presence, and that's what I call good. Never, I never ever start at noon and say, that's great. Sometimes it works out that way, sometimes it doesn't, but that's just me personally. I like to start all the way down, dial it in. Volume is gonna be roughly about unity. Let's hit it. I keep hitting this switch right here. This switch is just simply turning off this circuit so it bypasses completely. That way you don't hear a bunch of noise in the background. Now, this switch here, I'm gonna flip this over. You'll see the difference right now. It's in the hard clipping setting. So what did I do there? I just simply changed where the diodes were. That's all I did. I went from the diodes being in between the, uh, basically the output and the input pins, like you would in a normal op amp soft clipping arrangement, to diodes to ground. That's all I did there. You see, I did adjust the volume because there's gonna be a difference of volume whenever you do that. So I did have to kind of adjust the volume right there. Let's look at this circuit real quick and we'll see what's going on. So here, right here, we have the signal. So this is the signal generator. It's acting basically like a guitar. It goes through a resistor. It goes through a capacitor. This little resistor here is just simply to make the op amp work. It's just for biasing, which means making the op amp work like it should, basically. Now this area here, this is where the magic happens, so to speak. Uh, this is going to be our gain control and uh, got a little bit of a limiting resistor because I don't want it to go all the way to nothing, basically. And then this resistor and capacitor here is both going to tell us what frequencies we're going to boost, and it's also going to tell us like how much gain as well. So, so this area here, in combination with the potentiometer, the gain pot, is going to basically tell, tell us how much gain is going through this circuit. So from there, we go out of this op amp, this little triangle here is like the, you know, it's the little chip, that's the little op amp. And we go out in through a capacitor, then we go through a resistor, and then the diodes are clipping to ground, so that's in a hard clipping sort of arrangement. Very simple tone control, just rolls off some highs, or doesn't roll off some highs, depending on how you have it set. So it's not an active circuit, it's a passive, uh, it's a passive low pass filter, basically. Pretty simple thing into very simple tone, uh, very simple volume control. And I should I should also mention here just for just to make everything nice and neat and, and play well together with the mics and stuff. I do have a buffer in front and I have a buffer behind. Op amp buffer. It's our dB plus. 
pedal basically. Just making sure that I'm, I'm running long cable lengths and I, I don't want to get some degradation of the signal from the cable itself. Because with all this junk on the end of these circuits, you're going to have a higher impedance. So just keep that in mind. Buffer in, buffer out, just to make it play nice. So anyways, that's that's the basic circuit of this first distortion circuit here. Oh, and something else that we did too. We, we did hard clip it, but we also had that switch that put the diodes into, uh, you know, basically in between the in and out pins of the op amp, like so, just like that. And when you do the switching, you get rid of those diodes and that's your soft clipping arrangement. So that'd be your typical overdrive type of circuit there, basic overdrive circuit right there. All right, let's take, uh, let's go back over there. Now that we've looked at the circuit, let's change this into something completely different. And we're going to add a inverting op amp after our non-inverting op amp. And then we're gonna put diodes to ground there. And you know what? We might as well go ahead and throw the soft clipping diode circuit in there as well and flip back and forth again. Now, what am I doing here? This is now kind of turning it into something a little bit more like the, um, the MI Audio crunch box sort of thing. Uh, also similar like a Sir Riot. I think, that, I think the Angry Charlie is kind of based around this sort of circuit as well. Again, this is just a way to create a different type of distortion using op amps in this particular version. All right, let's turn this breadboard on and have it all completely changed now. One thing you'll notice, I had this volume cranked a lot. So in circuit design, one of the things that we have to take into account is, okay, when we're clipping the signal really hard, we're gonna lose some signal. So in this situation, I, uh, with that type of tone control, I'm probably going to add some other type of volume boosting stage if it was gonna be a final product. For this particular video, I'm just kind of showing you the differences of distortion creating a distortion circuit versus what we've done before with like overdrive, which is a little bit different. You're kind of doing things similar, but a little bit different. Now, when I flip this switch over, it's going to be basic, well, technically it's going to be probably hard clipping a little bit because I'm sending so much signal to it. But normally when the, when the diodes are in the position that it will, would be in, which is between the in and out pins on the op amp. And typically that's gonna be more of a soft clipping thing. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna back the volume way down because it is gonna be louder here. <laughs> All right, now let's take a look at this particular circuit, uh, you know, schematically and I'll dive a little bit more into the nerdy details. Okay, now this, this expanded version of this distortion circuit with the op amps. So we kind of have pretty much the same stage. I've changed a few things, same first stage. I've changed a few things. For example, the gain pod is much smaller. It's set up a little bit differently because I'm going into this non-inverting, I'm sorry, this inverting op amp right here. You can see it's inverting because in the non-inverting, our signal goes into the plus, into the positive input. In the inverting, our signal goes into the negative input and we basically run our positive input to what's called a virtual ground, uh, half voltage basically. That's what we're doing there. We're running into this inverting op amp, a lot of gain here, this one meg ohm, uh, resistor is going to give us a ton of gain right there. Uh, and then we're going to clip the crap out of it with these diodes right here. And uh, that's in the hard clipping arrangement. But we also did the same sort of thing where we wanted to see what would happen if we put some soft clipping diodes in it. So we literally just connected the soft clipping diodes right there. And whenever you flip the switch, 
and gets rid of those. So you now don't have those hard clipping diodes. You're just kind of doing a lot of soft clipping. And the thing with, with diodes in this type of arrangement, you throw enough signal through it, um, it can start to really almost start to sound more distortion-y, just more of a smoother compressed type of distortion. So it's it's a really cool thing, actually. Uh, really, it's just a different feel, and it's it's uh, it's a fun thing to play with. As far as the output section of this, you know, this uh, expanded version of this circuit, it's the same sort of thing. We still have the 1K, we still have the exact same tone control, the exact same volume control to the output. That's what's going on with that particular circuit. All right, let's have a little bit more fun. Let's go to a completely different type of distortion circuit. This one is using MOSFETs. No op amps whatsoever. I'm pretty much trying to make sure the frequencies are somewhat similar so it's not radically different. I'm using the same type of tone control exactly all that sort of thing. The gains aren't perfect, but they're pretty close, closely matched. And let's see what the difference is. Now, keep in mind, a lot of times, especially with distortion and overdrive circuits, sometimes you hear a YouTube video and you think, eh, sounds about the same. A big difference with different types of clipping structures and different type of circuit blocks is how does it feel? Is it compressing more? Like, does it feel spongy? Does it feel tight? Does it feel really responsive or does it feel like it sags just a little bit? And that stuff, of course, doesn't come across a YouTube video. So you're gonna have to take my word for some of it. All right, let's go to this. You just heard this particular circuit. I'll kick it on one more time. Well, I'll tap it on one more time just so you can kind of refresh your ears and then we'll turn this one on. Uh, again, this is, on this particular circuit, we have the gain, we have the tone, we have the volume. Let's start back with this one real quick just to acclimate our ears. MOSFET circuit. So what are we doing here? Uh, again, we have the signal, the signal generator. We're going through a 1K, a 0.1 microfarad into a MOSFET stage. So basically this is just like a sort of like a little transistor that is going to amplify the volume rather than using like an op amp to do it. And uh, Box of Rock Fact did this. The Bogner Lagrange, I think, has some of these in it that, that gives some of its distortion character. A bunch of other pedals do as well. Uh, so we're going into this MOSFET. Um, these res resistors here are kind of to make it play nice and be biased properly. Our gain control, completely different than what we did with an op amp. We're now kind of changing um, how much that MOSFET is going to amplify, basically. Then we go through some filtering because if we don't add basically a high pass filter, then we're going to get a pretty muddy distortion. So we add a little high pass filter into another gain stage, that's another MOSFET gain stage right there, into another MOSFET gain stage, and then we kill a little bit of signal because we don't want too much, and we go into another MOSFET stage. Again, same tone control, same volume control. So you'll see no diodes here. Why is that? Well, rather than ha you know amplifying the gain a bunch, amplifying, amplifying the volume of everything, and then clipping it because the volume's so high, you can, you can clip the crap out of it and make it distort. What we're doing here is more similar to like what you would do with preamp tube, like 12AX7s or something. We're amplifying the volume and then sending it to another very similar stage, and we're amplifying it again. But due to the limitations, due to the amount of power that it has and that it can and that it's given, it it starts clipping the signal. It starts compressing and clipping the signal, and distorts. And then we just do the same thing. So we boost it up as much as we can, 
and then it distorts because it can't boost anymore. And we try to do it a few more times to keep giving it more and more distortion. Now there is the, you know, there is the point where you have distorted it so much and all you hear is a bunch of background hiss and back, background noise. That does happen whenever you start cascading too many different gain stages together, no matter what type of circuit, really. You can add too much gain and it's going to hiss way too much. That's always something you're kind of fighting whenever you're creating any sort of uh, gain-based effect, especially. You're always kind of fighting the, the amount of gain versus how much noise is present, um, you know, how much can I get rid of that sort of thing. So ultimately, this is it just gives you an entirely different sound, entirely different feel. Um, it's I wouldn't say it's better or worse. It's something different. It's uh, instead of ketchup, it's mayonnaise. That's the way I look at it anyways. To me, the MOSFET is going to, it feels like it's a little more pick sensitive, not as much compression. I can hear the clean like harmonics coming through a little bit better. And honestly, right now in my temporary headspace in this video, I suppose, I kind of like that one a little bit more. I kind of like the MOSFET a little bit more. But tomorrow that probably will change because, you know, I'm a typical guitar player and I change my mind a lot. So just like everyone else. And um, yeah, so that's my, that's my thoughts on those two particular type of circuits. I'd love to hear what you think though. You heard, you heard the, the MOSFET, again, you can't feel it, but I would love to hear your thoughts on listening to the, to the YouTube video. What's, which is the one that kind of grabbed you and said, I like that style circuit better. And ultimately, you know, I hope that you like this video and I hope that you got something out of it. My, my goal is trying to sort of educate, uh, you know, guitar players so you kind of know when you get a pedal, if it's based on a, a MOSFET sort of design, kind of what, what to expect. And is it going to be different than, you know, pedal A versus pedal B? You know, what's going to be the differences there? So hope this kind of helps. And to the DIYers out there, I encourage you, get your own breadboard, experiment, learn all these little circuit blocks, put them together and have fun. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time with a new video.